Right now, today, you could break your leg and take a helicopter ambulance instead of a street ambulance, and your bill will be cheaper. Sounds insane, right? Buckle up, my beloved healthcare detectives. Gwen and Charlie are taking us on a wild ride through the emergency room of Wall Street's dreams. Welcome back, my intrepid health explorers, to another mind-bending episode of our podcast. I'm your host, Theo, ready to be your guide through the labyrinth of modern healthcare madness. Today, my dear data detectives and medical mavericks, we're diving headfirst into the topsy-turvy world of emergency care. Joined by our resident experts, Gwen, our healthcare policy guru, and Charlie, our medical ethics watchdog, we'll unravel the tangled web of private equity, surprise billing, and the shocking truth about ambulance costs. So, strap on your financial life vests, my cherished critical thinkers. Whether you're a concerned patient, a healthcare professional, or just someone who wants to understand why your ER visit might bankrupt you, this episode is your survival guide to the wild west of American healthcare. Let's embark on this emergency expedition and see if we can diagnose what's really ailing our medical system. Ready to dive into a mountain of healthcare articles. Sounds like a plan. We've got research, news, the works, everything from chronic conditions to ambulance bills. You ready? Let's do it. Break it all down. Figure out what matters. Okay, this study on older adults in Iran managing multiple chronic conditions really got me thinking. Iran. Yeah, their population's aging rapidly like a lot of the world feels relevant, right? It is, actually. Yeah. A glimpse into the future, in a way. So, what did they find? They were looking at what helps, what hurts, when it comes to managing not just one, but multiple health problems. And guess what they found? What's that? Fatigue plays a massive role. Oh, absolutely. We focus so much on the physical limitations of chronic illness, mm -hmm. but that constant drain, it's huge. Exactly. And it affects everything. How do you make good choices, advocate for yourself, when you're running on empty? It's nearly impossible. Yeah. That's why this study is so important. It's not just about willpower. It's about support, family, access to health care, even just a society that respects its elders. It's the bigger picture, right? Exactly. They even found a link between altruism, helping others, and better self-management. Whoa, really? <laughs> Seems counterintuitive, but yeah. Maybe it's about feeling connected, having a purpose beyond yourself. Makes you take care of yourself better. It's fascinating. Food for thought. Okay, let's shift gears a bit, talk about nursing homes, and some potentially good news on the telehealth front. Oh yeah, this is big, especially for rural areas. Mm -hmm. Looks like the house might make those pandemic telehealth flexibilities permanent. That's huge. Specialists without leaving the nursing home. Yeah. Exactly. Less burden on everyone. Hopefully better outcomes. But the next bit of news, well, it's mm -hmm. complicated. Oh, I like complicated. Hit me. Okay. so. Staffing shortages, right? Yeah. Huge problem. The worst. Yeah. So the House wants to make it easier to train and hire certified nursing assistants, CNAs. Makes sense. But what's the catch? One proposal gives CNAs already working in nursing homes two years to become fully certified. Instead of four months. Yep. Hmm. I can see how that might be controversial. Mm. Feels like a Band-Aid solution, right? Trying to fix a staffing shortage by, what, lowering the bar? It's a tough one. You want to get those roles filled fast, but... At what cost? Exactly. Is it worth potentially sacrificing quality of care from our most vulnerable, no less? Right. That's the debate. Proponents say it's necessary, given the urgency, but critics, they're worried. Understandably. It's a tough system. Long-term care. You need the staff, but the care has to be good care. It's a balance. Totally agree. And this is just one tiny piece of a much bigger puzzle. Welcome 
Welcome back to the Deep Dive. Speaking of puzzles, let's talk healthcare policy. Big changes coming to the MDS 3.0 RAI this October. Anyone with a loved one in a U.S. nursing home, listen up. Ah, uh, yes, the MDS. Sounds like gibberish to a lot of people, but... It's crucial. Determines level of care, funding, everything's tied to it. No kidding. So what's changing? Why should we care? Okay, so section GG, right? That's about a resident's functional abilities. I'm sensing a butt coming. <laughs> well, it's always been a pain to complete accurately. Even for seasoned staff, it's tricky. So write for errors, which means... What? Funding gets messed up? Care plans go sideways? Potentially, yeah. Mm -hmm. Hence the updates. They're trying to simplify it, make mm -hmm. it harder to screw up. Makes sense. Anything else? They're adding a whole new section for COVID-19 vaccination status. Ah, uh, the pandemic's legacy lives on. It really does. Mm -hmm. But the big takeaway here is this. Stay informed about these MDS changes, especially if you're involved in the loved one's care. Knowledge is power, as they say. Absolutely. All right, ready for a bit of a turn? Let's talk about money. Specifically, the high cost of emergencies. Oof, yeah. Sadly, a lot of people know that story all too well. Emergency rooms, supposed to be a safety net. Right, but they've become a financial minefield for too many. It's like they're designed to trap you. And part of the problem's private equity. They're buying up ERs, and guess what their priority is? Profits over people, I don't even need to guess. Sadly, no. And we're seeing the fallout. Longer waits, unnecessary tests, it's all about efficiency, not necessarily good care. It's terrifying, honestly. One doctor we read about, he talked about the pressure to just churn through patients, order tests, like a factory. Just to hit those targets. Exactly. And the financial strain doesn't end there. Ambulance bills, whole other beast. Oh, tell me about it. Surprise billing, anyone. Right. You'd think the No Surprises Act would cover it, but it covers air ambulances, not always ground ambulances. Wait. So I'm more protected if a helicopter takes me than a regular ambulance, seriously. It's messed up, right? People are getting slammed with bills, thousands of dollars, just for the ride. That's insane. It's like they punish you for not needing a helicopter. What are we supposed to do? It can feel, I don't know, almost hopeless sometimes, you know? Like it's this huge system, what can I even do? That's why we do this though, right? Knowledge, that's power. For real, for real. But okay, let's get practical. What can we do about all this? Besides despair, I mean. First things first, know the rules of the game. That no surprises act, it's confusing as heck, but learn it. And if a bill seems off, question it. Don't just pay. Easier said than done sometimes. Oh, totally. But there are resources, ways to decipher that stuff, maybe even fight back. We'll link some in the show notes. Oh, perfect. Okay, it's me, the individual. But what about bigger picture stuff? Private equity taking over healthcare? Like, how do we even begin to tackle that? So think local, right? Those hospital boards, they need people, community members. Imagine if those boards were full of people who get it, who put patients first. The grassroots change, huh? Exactly. Yeah. And while we're on the subject of making your voice heard, contact your reps. They need to hear it. Tell them affordable healthcare matters. Demand better. They work for us, right? right? Yeah. Theoretically. Exactly. So know your rights, get on those boards, and hold those elected officials accountable. Sounds small, but it adds up. I love that. It's about taking back some of that power, you yeah. know? As patients, as just people who deserve a decent system. Exactly. And hey, don't feel alone in this. Tons of folks out there fighting the good fight. Connect with them, learn, join in. Because we can have better, but gotta work for it. Well, my esteemed emergency care investigators, we've reached the end of our healthcare horror story. Feeling a bit queasy? Don't worry, that's just the side effect of swallowing the bitter pill of medical reality. So, what's your diagnosis? Are you ready to demand better from your local ER? Or are you Googling nearest helipad for your next medical emergency? Perhaps you're somewhere in the middle, seeing both the wounds and the potential treatments for our ailing system. If this episode raised your blood pressure in a good way, don't keep that righteous indignation to yourself. Share it with that friend who thinks their insurance will cover everything, or that politician who needs a wake-up call about healthcare reform. And hey, drop your thoughts in the comments. Are you team regulate private equity or nationalize the whole system? 
Your voice matters in this grand experiment we call American healthcare. Remember, every revolution in history started with people saying, this isn't right. So keep questioning, keep advocating, and who knows, maybe you'll be the one to write the prescription for a healthier, fairer medical system. Until next time, stay curious, stay skeptical, and for goodness sake, stay healthy. Your wallet will thank you. This is Theo, signing off from the front lines of the healthcare battlefield. Thank you.